Hello, my name is Reese Hunter and I'm the creator of the Freedom Fishies NFT collection that is yet to be released. Before I knew how to generate a collection of thousands of NFTs, I spent a ton of time researching and watching YouTube videos on how to do it. Pretty much all of these videos were unnecessarily long, skipped steps, and worst of all, didn't provide the right metadata that I needed for my project. In this video, I'll be showing you how you can very easily generate as many NFTs as you want and with the exact metadata that you need for your specific project. Right before we start, I mentioned earlier that I'm the creator of the Freedom Fishies NFT project, so if you have any interest in that, I'm going to leave the links to my Twitter, Instagram, and Discord server in the description of this video. So definitely check those out, and now let's learn how to generate some NFTs. Alrighty, so first things first, you're going to need to download two things. The first one is Node.js and the second one is Visual Studio Code. So I'll leave the links to these in the description so you can just click on the link and download them. If you're on Windows, you're gonna to wanna to click this one. If you're on Mac, here, and Linux, you can get it here. So once you have that downloaded, the next thing we're gonna need is Visual Studio Code. So once again, Windows here, Mac here, and Linux here. It's a really easy installation process, so I'm not gonna go through it with you, but I believe in you. All right, so now that you have Visual Studio Code installed, go ahead and open it and you'll see a screen just like this, pretty much. So you're gonna to wanna to go to File, Open Folder, and then go to Desktop or wherever you want your files to go and select Folder. So once you've done that, you're gonna go up to Terminal and add New Terminal. So as you can see, it adds this little thing here. We can extend it. And what we're gonna do is clone a GitHub repository. So to do that, you'll head over to this website. The link will be in the description go over to code and click this to copy the link right here. So now we can close out of that, go back into Visual Studio Code, and in this new terminal we just opened, type git clone, and then paste in the link. Press enter and it will start to clone the repository. Now that it's done, it has actually created a folder called Hashlips Art Engine on our desktop. So we're gonna go to file again, open folder, go to our desktop and open Hashlips Art Engine and select folder. So now that we're in here, we're just gonna open up a new terminal again so that we can use this later. And we're gonna go into source and we're gonna go into config.js. So we're just gonna configure a couple things to make our project work. The main thing we're gonna be editing is this function right here. So as you can see, these are the different layers that we're gonna have. So right now as default, we have these ones, but we're gonna change it to be our own. So open up your file explorer and go into the Hashlips art engine folder and then go into layers. So as you can see, the name of the layers in this code are the exact same as the name of these folders. So what you're gonna wanna do is rename these to be the names of all the layers that you have. So my layers are skin, outfit, mouth, item, hat, and eyes. So I'm gonna go ahead and rename all of these. All right, now that I have these all renamed, the next step is to add in the pictures. Also, keep in mind that the names of these folders are actually going to end up being the name of the properties in your metadata. So make sure you name them exactly what you want them to be. So what I'm going to do now is go into each folder, delete whatever's already in there, and then drag in your images for that layer. So as you can see, I'm in the eyes folder and I just added all the images for my eyes. And as you can see in their names, they all have number 100 in the end. This is important because it determines the rarity of this layer. I have mine all set at 100 because I wanted them to have the same rarity, but you can change yours to however you want it. For example, I could change the sunglasses to be 50 instead of 100, and then they'll be more rare. But I'm just going to keep it at 100. So now go through all of your other folders and repeat the process. Okay, I just finished, and as you can see, in every folder we have all of the images that we're going to need. But now all of our folder names are different from these ones. So we need to change these to be the exact same as these. So for me, it'll be eyes, hat, item, mouth, outfit, and skin. And since this is an extra one, we can go ahead and delete it. But if you need more layers, then you can go ahead and copy and paste as many as you need and change the name. Okay, next important piece of information is the description. So you need to make sure that this description is whatever you want the description for your entire collection to be. 
So for me, it'll be this, but yours will be whatever you want your description to be. The next thing we have to change is this number right here. This actually determines how many images are generated. So right now it would only generate 10, but I want 100 in my collection, so I can change it to 100. But if you want 1000 or 10,000, then you can change it to 10,000 or whatever number you want. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to leave it at 10 because I don't want to generate tons of images, but you should change that to however many images you want in your collection. All right, now it's time to add in the metadata that we're going to need. So I have mine copied right now. I'm just going to paste it in. For my project, this is all the metadata that I'm going to need, but for yours, you might need fewer or less. But typically, you're also going to need all of this. So the seller fee basis points are going to determine how much you get from royalties. 250 would be 2.5%. The collection will decide the name of your collection. And for creators, it's important that you put the address that you want to receive payments from. I'll also leave a link in the description to some documentation explaining all the metadata that you'll need for your project. I highly recommend reading that. All right, now there's only one thing left to do and you might not even need to do this. So for my particular project, I need the image metadata to be different than whatever's set up in here. So what I'm gonna do is change this to be image.png and then I'm gonna go into main.js and I'm going to change this and just leave it blank. Again, you might not need to do this for your project. A lot of this is per project customization, so I'd recommend figuring out exactly what you need and then making the changes necessary. But if you do need to change that, then that's how you do it. So now in this terminal, you're going to type yarn install, and this is just going to install all the necessary dependencies you're going to need to run this project. Once that's finished, you can type node index.js, and it's going to actually start building all of your images for you. Since I only set this number to 10, it only generated 10 images and it was pretty quick. So now if we go into the hashlips art engine folder on our desktop, there will be a new folder called build. So if we go into that, we will see folders containing all of our JSON metadata files and images. So you can see our images are all randomly generated here. Beautiful. And if you go back out into JSON, then you will see each one has its own metadata containing all of the attributes that we need. Each image has its own corresponding JSON file, and it also creates a metadata file containing all of them. So that is how you can very easily randomly generate as many images as you want. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really hope I was able to help you out in one way or another. If I did, make sure to leave a like and subscribe so that I know I should keep making more videos. Also, make sure to check out my Twitter, Instagram, and Discord server. The links are in the description of this video, and hopefully I will see you guys in another video.